common problem you might run across when creating an application is that somebody wants to generate a PDF and export it. But PDF exporting is difficult and terrible, and it always will be. Or maybe it won't be. Let's mash on that. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters, where we are here with a resounding maybe for you. So maybe today we're going to talk about some simplified code for some PDF stuff, the portable mm -hmm. document have format that everyone loves. Have we finally solved this problem, Simon? Uh, well, we not, but we have a different possible solution. So let me, let me get right into it. Um, so the problem that I had was that uh, I needed to export a calendar of events from my application. People wanted it to be a PDF and they wanted to be able to like hang it up in their office. Uh, so I wrote the initial version of this using a PDF library. Um, I don't remember what it is, PDF shop maybe. Um, but the deal with it was that basically you just said like, at this location in the document, write this string. And that worked fine for a little bit. Uh, but then they decided that the export was kind of ugly and they wanted it to look nicer. Uh, so they wanted to add some like embedded images and um, have stuff flow from page to page. And I was like, ooh, this feels complicated uh, because now I was basically going to have to write a layout engine to handle things like, what if this is at the bottom of the page? It needs to flow over onto the next page. How do I know that? What if it's on the right side of the page and it needs to wrap around to the left side of the page? How are we going to handle that? And then I need to embed images and like resize images appropriately. And I was like, this is crazy. If only there was some sort of tooling out there that provided a layout engine for me. If only. Then I remembered, hey, what about that web browser thing that most people have and use? <laughs> um, there's a language built into that that allows me to lay things out on the screen using CSS. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. Uh, and I already know enough CSS to be dangerous, so maybe I can use that instead. Um, so I went on a little bit of an adventure there, trying to convert a web page into uh, PDF. Um, so there's a bunch of different options out there. Uh, a lot of them are pay options. And although I'm not opposed to paying for this stuff, I just can't be bothered sometimes to like go to my client and be like, Hey, can we buy this $500 thing? Um, and instead we're just going to write something ourselves. Um, so there's actually a package out there that I'm going to use here. And what we're looking to have is just something that takes in some HTML, renders it and then returns a PDF. So what I have for us here is a brand new functions application here. Uh, we'll just start it up. It just has a single endpoint. Um, and if we load that, uh, we can see that this HTTP trigger was successfully executed. Oh, if only it was a, it was a PDF. Uh, and I think we also have the ability to pass in the name. Ooh. There we go. So this is just straight out of the box, what it looks like. So I'm going to go and install a package here called wkhtml2pdf.net, which is pretty much exactly what you would expect. Um, so that is going to go and install this library. And the way that this thing works is it uses uh, kind of an embedded web browser to render your web page, then take a screenshot of it and convert it into a PDF uh, and away we go. So it actually uses WebKit under the covers. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, so let's set this up. So the first thing that we want to do is kind of generate this PDF. So I'm going to start with a memory stream. I'm just going to copy and paste some of this stuff because otherwise we'll just be sitting here all day watching me type. Okay, so. This is going to add in the tooling. So this is adds the PDF tools and I have this basic converter to create the PDF for me. Um, so I'm going to create a new document in here. That looks like this. Uh, so you have to give it a few settings here. Like do you want this thing to be color or grayscale? 
Uh, so we'll go for color on this one. What do, what's the orientation? What's the paper size? There are a lot of different paper sizes out there. I don't know if you're aware of this, but there's like page upon page upon page of different papers out there. Uh, but wow. probably letter is sufficient for our needs right now. Uh, and here, this result, I'm just going to give it the response message here. Um, so it's going to be really naive here and just give this thing a string. A string is probably not valid HTML, but we'll, we'll go for it. Uh, so now that I've got this doc figured out here, I'm going to go and I'm going to just get the bytes for that document and return that. Uh, and I can return that as a return new file. What's this one here? A file stream result. That's what I usually return, but I just have an array of bytes, so I can probably just return a, with some sort of a file result. Let's see. No, this one lets me set a line type the way I want to. Yeah, it does. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna quickly convert this thing into a memory stream because that happens to be what I have. So I will just do a memory stream right and I will seek back. Give me my memory stream. Uh, and then I can return a file stream result with the memory stream and a file type with I think right content type over in here file stream result so that just takes a line type here which is going to be a application PDF I think all right old one, save it, and we can give this a run again and see what happens. Right. So there we go, that has returned a PDF. Uh, now obviously this one Good. is pretty simplistic, um, but it does allow us to put in, oops, I really shouldn't have closed that browser window. Oh, what I wanted to do was stop this, but it allows us to put in different things. So we could go in and do like, hey, let's throw an italic tag in here um, and let's throw a horizontal line in there. Uh, and that sort of thing. So this makes it pretty easy for us to go and build things that are a little bit easier to, to Well, use. actually, I, I think you could even start to marry some things together because if you did this, for example, inside of like um, a durable function, you could chain together a couple of things such as go and build some object data or whatever by calling different services, save something to the database and then request a web page um, rendered from the server that includes things like the images and the layout and the CSS and all of those other things, this would, then you'd get that HTML string back and then you could render it and save it out as a PDF. So you could actually chain together some pretty powerful things here. If I'm, if I'm reading this right. Yes. Yeah. So you could do a lot of interesting things with this. Um, so what I was thinking about doing and we'll cover in the next episode, um, which we'll record at some point in the future here is marrying this with a view engine. So something like the Razor view engine. So that makes constructing HTML a little bit easier. Um, right. Because it's just like, it's, it's way more exciting. I don't think this thing is rendering properly at the moment. Maybe I need to validate this HTML. Yeah, I like the idea of tying it with a view engine to make the actual HTML generation part a little easier. Yeah, I don't know why this isn't displaying the HTML that I was hoping it would display. But it might be that I just need to restart this whole application. So Simon, you said this works in a functions app, like when it's right. deployed. So that's that was one of the other 
issues that I had with some of the other solutions was that uh, it, they don't necessarily work inside of a functions app. Uh, but this one seems to do okay inside of functions app. There we go. Finally got it. So this is WKHTML to PDF, you said? Right. So, yeah, let me talk a little bit about that. So the way that this works, like I said before, is that it embeds a browser engine um, mm. and allows you for rendering it. The problem with this solution is that the browser engine that it embeds is ancient. Um, so it's sort of like 2016 era browser engine. Uh, so a lot of the things that I really wanted to use, like Flexbox layout, um, aren't supported. Uh, that one, Flexbox is almost supported if you prefix the, the CSS, uh, but it's not quite there yet. So this isn't like a perfect solution. And unfortunately, there's some significant engineering challenges on this project around upgrading the version of um, the HTML rendering engine behind the scenes. So that's not fantastic for this. Um, I have seen some other people talking about using like Puppeteer and embedding that along with um, the browser that Puppeteer comes with inside of your application. So that's another approach that you can take, uh, which will give you like a much more modern browser. It'll give you the latest version of the browser, but then again, it's a little bit complicated setting up like web servers and stuff. Um, another one of the problems that I ran into with this was embedding an image in this. So when I went to add an image initially, I just like, I was like, oh, what, what path am I gonna give this image here such that the browser can find it? And I, messed around with it a little bit and couldn't figure it out. Um, and you can put in a public URL for an image. So if you have the image already hosted somewhere, you can point it to a public URL and it'll embed that image nicely. Uh, but what I ended up doing actually was converting my images to data URLs and just putting them directly into the HTML that I was rendering. Right. Uh, and then it ended up just being like one file that it rendered nicely. Um, so Sense. that was definitely a, a reasonable approach. So this, is this is this actually rendered out? Sorry, Dave. Is this rendered out as an image PDF, or is it actually? Are there? Is it t like doing like the actual elements? Like, so you're, it's not an image then. No, 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 so you're it's, saying it's, it's like can it a screenshot, yeah, yeah. but it's actually doing a conversion to yeah. So I mean, PDF what, format. What it's doing is it's like it's running Chrome under the covers, so it's just basically doing like the file print. Um, Save to PDF, PDF or whatever it was, mm -hmm. right? Somewhere, sure. Yeah, save as PDF. That's the one. Um, so, somebody somewhere at Google has implemented this feature. Thank goodness they did. Um, mm -hmm. So there is one other limitation if you're running this on app service, uh, which I think is what Functions runs on as well. Mm -hmm. That you can't do custom fonts; those don't get rendered, and it just uses whatever the system font is instead. So that's just something else to be aware of too. Oh, interesting. Like you wouldn't be able to pull in a public font via CSS? I don't think so, no. Interesting. Hmm, I'm surprised at that. I feel like so I'm I can't do it in the web app sandbox, and which I can link to in the notes as well. Stumble over CSS style font. And we go and the call sign character encoding. I stumble on a font family. Um, I think that's a font family. You'll need to also close your span. You just did open oh, span, open span. Double open the span. Yeah. Next question is, can I tell the difference between Verdana and whatever yeah. the default font is? Uh, at know. least the, well, the default font is uh, um, cur uh, cursive, not what is it, cursive? Um, serif? A serif font, yeah. yeah. That looks like it works to me. Well, that would be a system font. font though, right? Like that would be, oh, I, I feel like what you're saying. Verdana is a, but yeah, if, yeah, if you went font. to oh, maybe Google I misunderstand fonts what and- saying. Like you're saying that I can't use custom like Google fonts or you're saying that I can't use font that isn't one of the default font is. It has to be a font that's installed, I think, on oh, that okay. app service sandbox machine. Okay. 
well, I'm going to play with that and try yeah. downloading like a Google font and see if it, it works or not. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, cool. that's it. So in my next episode, I'll add a few ranger to this. But thank Looking you everyone for it. joining us today. Uh, so if you'd like, you can comment and share and subscribe and all those things that really are probably not going to make our lives super different. Like It's unlikely we're going to quit our jobs and become full-time YouTube people. Um, we still appreciate it, though. Yes, we do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> it just makes us feel fuzzy and warm inside. All right. Well, we'll see everybody on next episode. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Where's the button? Uh, Dave, I tell you.